What's up guys? So I have a new project and it involves my first ever acrylic aquarium. I got this acrylic aquarium basically for free. I traded a USB nano air pump for it. This is actually from one of my followers on my channel. Um, his name's Nick, so thank you very much. It started off as a um, 55 gallon, it's made by Sea Clear, full acrylic tank, so it would have been used for salt water. And he got it with the intention to restore it. He started the project. Um, he got the front panel sanded, um, let's say 80% of the way. And then it still needs like the sides redone. The top's a little beat up, but um, he ended up just buying a brand new 75 gallon glass aquarium and no longer had interest in completing this project. Asked if I wanted it and I said, sure, give me something to do. So I'm gonna see what I can do using some of my car products that I have. I have different abrasives in polishing compounds, and I'm gonna see if I can just polish out what he's already sanded, and if not, then I'll have to actually get into manual sanding of it. But let's check it out. All right, so here's the aquarium. It is a 55. Um, it's a little beat up. The bottom actually has its uh, paper protective film on it still. It never got pulled off. So that's why it looks all brown and kind of nasty, but it's actually just paper. It's got a full black background. And this top, I'm not really sure what happened up here. Um, Nick didn't do this. This is how he got it. Um, but it was cut out for whatever reason. And um, I'm wondering if this was previously used as a sump. And maybe this was cut out for like a protein skimmer. But um, he actually gave me another piece of acrylic that's actually the same size as this um, top piece that I could you know, replate this top if I want to. Um, the aquarium's not drilled, and my plans are to just try to see if I can make it clear. Worst case, I can use this as a sump. It'd be perfect for a sump for one of my fish racks. Um, and if that doesn't work, and, um, you know, I could always donate this off to Ohio Fish Rescue. You know, maybe they could use it as a, a quarantine tank or, or whatever else. But I'm going to start with, I got my drill. These are some products I use from, it's called The Chemical Guys. It's a company that does automotive, like waxes and polishes and stuff like that. Um, I had already bought all this stuff for my car and I haven't even used it yet. And these are little buffing pads that you can put on a drill or if you have an electric um, buffer or, you know, even pneumatic. So I want to see if I can use a cutting pad and cutting compound so this is really for clear coat and i don't know if it's abrasive enough to really help polish this out but i'm gonna give it a shot all right like i said this is actually made for clear coat of a car it's a v series is what i call it i don't know if they call it that but it starts with z v32 then goes to v34 um 36 and 38 v32 and 34 are um, compounds this is what will get like all the swirl marks out of your car's clear coat um, the v32 the lower the number the more abrasive it is so the, they call this the um, extreme compound and then goes to a hybrid compound and then goes into a polish the polish would be like your last steps before you seal it but I'm gonna go ahead and try this v32 I think I'm just gonna do it on a section right here and see if it does anything on this I honestly don't think it will, but you know, it's worth a shot. But here's the before, I guess would be a good way. You know, it's 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 clear, it's just, it's foggy. So I wanna see if I can make this any better. All right, guys, I should have recorded that because you're not going to believe how quickly I just did this. I'm saying this was 60 seconds worth of just buffing with this compound. And I did the outside right here, and it wasn't like a huge improvement. And when I was really looking at this, all this fogginess is on the inside of the tank. So I just put a little bit of polishing compound on the inside, hit this area right here. And I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. but it's way, way clearer. This is on the inside of the tank. 
Um, on my phone, it looks really clear, but you know, I guess on, on film, we'll see. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit the inside of this tank because I think that's where the majority of all these scratches are. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Nick was primarily focused on the outside or on the inside, but I just basically hit this on the inside and it's looking way better already. guys I'm gonna start on this side and see the sides are definitely the worst um, completely opaque so we'll see how I can make this look check it out looking pretty good you couldn't see through this before and now you can easily see the, the package inside the tank you know you can read everything now this did take longer I did go through all four layers or uh, all four steps and the best way i could describe these these are like liquid sandpaper that's all buffing a car is it's like a very fine you know when you have a cutting compound you're basically liquid sanding your clear coat to get all the scratches out now i can make this optically clear if i would have wet sanded this first and then went straight to this or went to this but i went straight to the um compounds because i'll be honest i don't want to put a whole lot of time into this thing like it's not a showpiece like to really make this thing a display tank i need to redo the top and really go through and like sand this thing pretty heavily um to get it that crystal clear but for me 
it's all about time investment into the project i want this thing clear enough to where you can see in see your fish but it doesn't need to be crystal clear to make me happy basically this was a free tank i'm just trying to put some time into it i'm kind of allotting myself like two hours of labor to get this to where i want it and that's all i really want to invest into this is about two hours and this whole panel took about a half an hour by itself and that's inside and out um, to go through all four stages and like i said if i would have wet sanded this thing first um it'd be you know crystal clear it's kind of got a haze to it but it is way better than before so now i need to um do the front panel inside and out um i need to i want to start with the front uh, outside of it i'm going to go through all four layers and uh four, four layers four steps of the compound grits which like i said is like wet sandpaper um and hit this outside and go from there and the battery in the drill died so now i gotta go charge it so this might be more than two hours all right guys so actually i had to stop working on the tank um i took a break while my drill battery was charging i ended up running over to my sister's house to help clean out their gutters and when i got back it started raining so i had to basically bring everything indoors and um so right now um i guess i'm putting a pause on it but i figure i'll show you where i'm at and then i'll continue this video once the weather breaks and it's nice out again but let's check out the tank and the progress I've made. All right, so the tank's indoors, it's acrylic, it gets cold outside at night, so I didn't want it outside. And basically, I, I've i gotten this edge of it done. It's pretty clear, it's, it's not crystal clear, but it's not too shabby. This front, I got the front uh, outside of the panel done. I still need to go and do the full inside in all four grits. And then on this side, um, I need to do the inside as well. The ends were definitely the worst of the panels. Um, like I said, the previous um, owner had started restoring it, so the front panel wasn't that bad at all. Uh, he didn't touch the end panel, so that's where I'm taking over. I have the outside, it's nice and smooth. Um, it's polished, I need to do the inside and you can see it's still hazy. All right guys, so I have a chance to get back on the acrylic tank and I have to get this done today. I have to get it washed out because I just picked up a breeding trio of Super Reds. Um, they are a proven breeder and I also got 25 of their fry with them they're in a bucket i just got home the weather today calls for rain so right now it's mostly overcast we'll see what happens but i gotta finish polishing this tank up um even if i don't get it fully you know crystal clear i need to get it good enough to get water in it and uh, move some cycle sponges over to it and get those plucos in this tank and i'm going to use it as a super red breeding tank so let's get cracking.
All right, so um, as far as I want to go on polishing, I could put more time into it, but um, I decided I, I was going to do only two hours worth of work and see how far I got. I'm actually probably, I don't know, maybe three to four hours into this now. Um, I end up polishing probably like 75% of the top of the tank. I wasn't really going to do the top, but I figured I might as well do it make it look a little better. I could put more time into it, but I don't want to put a whole lot of time into this project because I do need to get this thing up and running uh, today. So now it's time to wash the tank out. I want to set it up on this table and get the garden hose out and rinse it out and try to get all the dust out of it. So let's do that now. guys I got it washed out put just a little bit of water in it but she is clean she'll be ready to go here pretty shortly as you can see it's it's pretty clear uh, right now I mean it doesn't look great because there's all the water on the inside of it but for a free acrylic tank it'll work All right, guys, so I got it done. I set up the tank. I put water in it. Um, I used my uh, diamond black sand. It's super, super dusty, so the water's settling. I need to put a heater in the tank, and I'm going to put um, a box filter in it to try to pull out the uh, particles out of the water. And I, just why that's kind of settling, I figured I'd mention kind of about the process of basically buffing the acrylic um, this was the first time I've used the chemical guys um, rubbing slash buffing compounds that I used uh, it came as a four pack I got through Amazon I'll try to put a link in the description to what I actually bought the buffing wheels are just the cheapest um, I guess buffing pads that I could find on Amazon came in like a 20 pack I'll also put a link to that in the description uh, I treat those as throwaway when I'm done with a project. I just throw them away. And so therefore I buy the cheapest ones possible. And um, I guess some tips or tricks or just some other random stuff about polishing the acrylic. I use just a drill with a three inch buffing pad. If I had a actual buffer or something that was bigger, maybe with like a seven inch pad or eight inch, it would go a lot faster. Um, but the drill was really nice to be able to do the inside of the tank. Uh, outside the tank would definitely gone way faster with a bigger buffer um, I'm not a detailer so I'm sure there's maybe a better product out there or a better process to do this but being a mechanic I knew how to do it good enough I guess um, to get a, a decent result and I will show you the result here in a minute 
but um, just take your time doing it. And if you have heavy scratches, you are going to have to sand the acrylic and get those scratches out. Uh, this tank was originally uh, purchased from my subscriber, Nick. Um, it was scratched, so he sanded it. And he just didn't make it to like the buffing uh, portion of restoring the acrylic. So when I got the tank, uh, all I had to do was really buff it. It was already sanded smooth, but whenever you sand acrylic, it makes it really hazy looking. And I've done this process a ton of times at work on car headlights. The plastic headlights that get all foggy. It's basically the same process. You sand out the corrosion and then you buff them to get the clarity back. So that's where my experience came into play with this project. Now, just kind of take your time in do smaller sections you know with the front i kind of divided it into three sections uh in the beginning and then at the end i just basically did half and half of the front so two sections with this tank i didn't have to put a whole lot of labor into it like i said maybe three to four hours total time and the more time you put into it the better your results will be but i'm happy with the results and i didn't want to put too much time into it but just take your time and basically the rubbing compound or the cutting compound it's the best way to describe it it's liquid sandpaper so when you're sanding something you start at let's say 600 grit and then you go to 800 grit and then 1200 grit in wet sanding and then usually you go to 2000 grit wet sand and then after 2000 grit wet sorry my uh phone actually rang when i was just talking but um, you basically go to 2000 grit wet sanding and that's when you switch to the buffing compounds. Um, it's not hard labor. It, it's just time consuming and your arm, or well, at least my arms were getting tired from standing above the tank, reaching down in for a little while with holding that drill. Um, I was using a heavy, heavier battery. It's got more amp hours to it. So more capacity lasts a little bit longer. Um, just kind of made my, my arms a little tired, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, just take your time and I think you can get it done without too much headache. And once, once you have like the major scratches out, that's the main key, but polishing is not hard, but let's check out the tank now. All right, guys, here it is. So I ended up putting it in my office. Um, I really debated where to put this tank, and I thought, man, this would be awesome to watch while I'm doing my orders every day. Um, I want to start doing my live streams back in here again, and I think this would be a good backdrop. Um, the water is it, it's cloudy because I'm using that black diamond um, blasting sand, and it's super dusty. So it's going to take a few hours um, to get all the dust particles out of the water. I do have two box filters with lava rock in the bottom to weight it to give it some biological surface area. And there is um, filter floss. <clears throat> and the filter floss is already getting dirty, which is great because it's going to help get this cloudiness out. But the, uh, the polish job ended up coming out really well. I know this is a terrible way to show this, guys, because it's so cloudy. But I'm telling you, it's it's clear. Um, the acrylic's clear. Um, I did put some caves in here. And um, I will plant this tank. But I need to let this thing uh, get up to temperature. There's a 200 watt heater in it. Um, this is 74 and a half degrees. My plecos are at 76 and a half. So we're getting close. Um, but I want to get them out of here. Look how big that female is. There's two males and a female in here. Um, this is a proven trio. You can see I did get 25 um, baby plecos as well. And um, this will be their new home. And this is where I plan on letting them breed out and um, basically sell or breed for profit. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Um, if you have any questions, drop me a comment. I try to respond to all the comments. Um, this tank will just get clearer and clearer as the time goes on. It's just super, super fine particles in the water right now. But that filter floss um, does a really good job at clarifying the water. So 
Um, I, I bet here later tonight this will be pretty clear. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell if you want to keep up with new projects and my live streams and stuff like that. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. See ya.